Uptime Kuma is a tool that I've used for a long time, but I never fully configured it. I set up a few monitors that I considered important, would periodically check them, and it's been that way for years at this point. With that said, my home lab has slowly grown and it's getting harder to manage what is and isn't working properly. So I took some time to fully configure Uptime Kuma and I've been missing out. And if you don't have it fully configured or have never heard of it, you've been to. Let me quickly show you how I have mine set up. So this is my Uptime Kuma dashboard. I basically have just a bunch of monitors set up. So I am monitoring all of my Docker containers. I'm monitoring a few things for my house. So Blue Iris is for my surveillance, Home Assistant, obviously, uh, an NTP server. So this NTP server is used for the security cameras, all of my security cameras that are listed here, which are being monitored as well, report to that NTP server for the time. So they are all always using the same time. I have a few different categories here for Proxmox. So I have my Proxmox server here that one is online, one has a hardware problem right now, so it is offline, so I pause that monitor. And then for my Proxmox cluster, which is my mini PCs, I have a separate group for that. So these are all grouped together. And then for my test environment, I actually have these configured in upside down mode. So upside down mode basically just means that when they're online, they are actually offline, and when they're offline, they report as online. The reason I did that is because these test servers are generally used for tutorials, and those tutorials are normally created, and then three months later, I realized that these servers are still online. So this allows me to ensure that if they're green, I know they're off, and if they're red, I know that they're online, and I have to turn them off when I'm done. Finally, I have my Unify network. These are all my switches and my access points, and then I have the WonderTech website. So the WonderTech website is monitored but what I noticed is that it reports as offline fairly frequently, even though it's not actually offline. So what I did here is I changed the retries variable to three, which I'll explain all this during the setup process. But this just ensures that it has to report three total times as down in order for me to get notified that it's down. And then I have all of my notifications being sent to me through Home Assistant. So this works extremely well at this point, but basically everything is grouped together and I have notifications set up based on that. Now there's more that I wanna to add to this, especially around my surveillance system, as I'd like to use the Blue Iris API to ensure that everything is recording properly and not only online, which is what it's doing right now. But that's more advanced functionality that I don't think many users would be interested in. So let's break down how to set it up, but more importantly, how to configure it so you can monitor all of your services and get notified if any of them go down. Okay, so I'm gonna be using Synology DSM for this, but I'm gonna be using a Docker Compose file. So you can use that on any device using Docker Compose, and there's even a Docker run command, which I will uh, leave a link to in the description. But the Docker Compose file I have in written instructions, I'll leave in the description as well. So up to this point, all I did is I went in and I created a folder for Uptime Kuma, which is where we're going to be actually adding all of our files for this. So I created a new project and then I added in the uh, Docker Compose file here. The only thing I want to point out with this Docker Compose file is this Docker uh, volume right here. So this is going to actually allow us to monitor our Docker containers by using their name directly from Uptime Kuma. So I'll demo that in a little bit, but I'm just going to quickly configure the actual container here. Okay, so as soon as the container is created, we should be able to open up a new tab navigate to the IP address of the Docker server, port 3001, and then you could go through the setup process. So you can create a username and a password, and at that point, Uptime Kuma is set up, and we now have to configure it. Okay, so at this point, Uptime Kuma is set up, but it needs to be configured. I tend to group all my machines into different categories like I showed you earlier, but there are many ways that you can do it. For example, if you have a hypervisor like Proxmox running multiple VMs, you might wanna group all the VMs that are running on that device into one group. Alternatively, you might wanna group them by service and not by device. The point is there are many ways to do this and one isn't necessarily right. So let's look at how to configure Uptime Kuma from a general perspective. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is actually configure monitoring for a Docker container. I think this is probably the easiest way to do it. So if you add a new monitor here, what we're gonna do is we are going to select Docker container here. And then what we're gonna do is create a new Docker host. So this right here matches that volume that we created earlier. So if you test this, it should come back as successful. So I'm just gonna save this as Docker and then we have a Docker host that we can use. So on my Docker host, I'm running Pi-hole. So I'm just gonna give it a friendly name and I'm also gonna put in the container name. Now it has to match the container name exactly. 
So as soon as we do that, what you will see is that we're gonna report as green. But let's modify this a little further. So at this point, the heartbeat interval is every 60 seconds. We're gonna change this to every 20 seconds. And retries, this retries parameter is very important if you want to send notifications, which we'll look at later. So this is how many times the device or service has to report as down before it will notify you. So for me, I'm gonna leave this as zero because if it reports at all that it's down, it's probably down. But this will become more important based on whatever service you're using. So like I said earlier, if you're monitoring an external website, you probably wanna set this as two or three because it's gonna report as down periodically even if it's not down. So the only other thing to mention here is that you can set this resend notifications to be something higher than zero. We're gonna look at notifications later, so we'll get back to this, but that's something else. Finally, groups. So we're gonna create a new group here, and we're gonna create it as Docker containers, and I'm gonna set all of my Docker containers to actually be in this monitor group. Tags, if you wanna create tags, you can create tags. This is just a way that you can create tags for your uh, actual services if you'd like. So if we save this here, what you'll see is we created a new group, and inside of that group, we have Pi-hole. So we also are running Uptime Coom. I don't have anything else running on here. Now this is probably something that you won't do if I'm being honest, but technically you can monitor any Docker containers, including Uptime Kuma. So at this point, our interface is configured and we are monitoring our Docker containers directly through Uptime Kuma. Okay, so let's say that you wanted to monitor some other things. So HTTPS, this would be for a web server. So let's actually monitor DSM. So I typed in the URL for DSM at this point. I'll monitor it every 30 seconds. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ignore the SSL certificate because it's a self-signed certificate. Everything else here can be modified as well. So if you wanna change the, uh, the retries or the resend notification, but assuming that it can connect, it's going to show as green. So at that point, it is actually monitoring DSM, and if DSM goes down for any reason, it's gonna show up here as red. To show you what would happen if a service does go down, what I'll do is I'll actually stop this pie hole container, and as soon as it stops, okay, now that it's stopped, if we come back here in a second here, it should report pie hole as down. Okay, so pie hole has reported as down. And what you'll see also is that not only is Pi-hole gonna report as down, but what will happen is this Docker container group, the next time it checks, is gonna report as down as well. There you go. So it's inaccessible. So that's another way that you could structure your group. So for example, if you had multiple services that all work together, you probably wanna put them in one group because the group itself will report as down as well you have to determine how you want to monitor that. So in terms of monitors, there's a bunch of different monitors here. You can monitor a web page with a keyword. So if you wanted to check to make sure that a web page loaded properly and you were expecting a certain keyword, you could actually monitor that website with the keyword to ensure that you're hitting the right page. You can monitor your DNS server. So if you wanted to check to make sure that DNS was working properly, you could do that. You can check individual ports. Ping is gonna be a popular one. So let's say you had security cameras like I have and you wanted to just ping them to make sure they're online. You could do that. You can monitor your network. The point is there's a lot of things you could do here. So the only other thing, like I said earlier, is upside down mode. If you wanna ensure that a device or a service is down and it reports as offline, if it's online, if that makes sense. So I'll change DSM at this point. I'll make the heartbeat interval 20 and I'll just change this to upside down mode. But at this point, DSM is online, but it's reporting as offline because it's using upside down mode. So that's actually a very powerful uh, feature. Finally, the only other thing, if you're using an API, this is actually how I want to configure Blue Iris because Blue Iris allows me to actually check to see what is online and what is offline and it'll return a JSON output based on HTTP post. More advanced functionality, but if you wanted to configure that to actually get very granular uh, responses in terms of what you're looking for, you can do this. So this is something that I plan on doing for Blue Iris to ensure that not only is the server online, but it's actually recording. If for whatever reason it stops recording on the cameras, it will notify me. So slightly more advanced functionality here, but that's something that you can do as well. So I'll change this back to the way that it was, and you'll see that we are back online at this point. Okay, so at this point, you have to go through and add all your devices and services. However, the biggest part of this hasn't been configured yet, and that is notifications. 
The goal of this setup is to not only have a visual interface to see when devices are up or down, but actually receive notifications based on their status and the settings configured for each monitor. This completes the setup by bringing it full circle. We know when devices are up and down, so let's configure notifications to inform us if a service or device is offline. Okay, so in the settings here, we can select notifications and then set up notification. Now the notification type that you use is going to be entirely different based on whatever type of notification you'd like to receive. I personally use Home Assistant. So I would come here, I type in my Home Assistant URL. I'm on a test network, so I can't do this now, but I'll overlay a screenshot. But I type in my Home Assistant URL, as well as a long-lived access token, and then specify the exact devices that I wanna receive the notifications on. So for this, I wouldn't notify all devices, I would notify my cell phone, and I'll show a screenshot for how I have that set up. But the idea here is that after setting this up, I will receive notifications on that device and that device only. At the bottom here, we have default enabled. So this will ensure that whenever you create a new monitor, it will automatically turn on this notification. And you can also apply this to all monitors as well. Now the type of notification, you can use multiple. So if you wanna receive an SMS for specific services that are extremely important, you can configure that. For me, I do everything through Home Assistant, but there are a lot of different options here. And unfortunately, the actual setup process for each of them is different. So you're probably gonna to have to look up based on exactly what you wanna do, how to set it up. I can't really show it here, but go through, set up notifications based on whatever you actually want to use here. So what I want to show is that after the notifications are set up, what we can do is if you modify an individual monitor, you can turn that notification on or off. So that's kind of the power in having multiple different types of notifications. If you have one that's more urgent, you can modify them based on the urgency to use different forms of communication. So the only other thing I want to show here is this retries. So what we're going to do is change this to three, and then we're going to save it. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to actually stop pie hole. Okay, so now that it's stopped, the next time it reports, it's going to report as yellow. It should report as yellow three total times, and then it's going to determine that pie hole is offline. Okay, so three times it was yellow. The fourth time it responded as red because it determined it is officially offline. So based on this retries parameter, the notification that you have set up will not actually notify you until it reports as red. So that's actually a very important setting right there. Finally, you can resend the notification if you'd like. So that's a general setup for Uptime Kuma that you can use as a baseline. But I think it's important to mention that this can only be taken so far. For example, if Uptime Kuma goes down, you won't be notified of anything. But it can also happen if the device running Uptime Kuma goes down or the switch it's connected to goes down, you get the point. Outside of configuring multiple devices with some form of high availability, the application itself will always be a weak point. But at the same time, I think you can really only take this stuff so far, and I think this gets us most of the way there. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.